Hey guys, welcome back to week two of our beginner series. I hope you liked our sewing kit we shared with you last week. Today we have some patterns that we think would be really good for beginners and it's some of the first patterns that we ever sewed with Chip. So we'll get started sharing with you some things that are great to start with. First up, I have um, a pattern by Colette. Uh, this was probably my second thing I ever sewed. Um, another Colette pattern was my first. Colette does a really good job with their directions. They really, um, the ones that are marked for beginners, um, really teach you how to do what the pattern needs you to do. Um, so for instance, this one you have to insert a zipper. She teaches you how to insert a zipper. So that's really helpful. There's pictures, um, tips. Um, it's pretty easy to fit because it's just an A-line. So you don't have to worry too much about, you know, pencil skirt really fitting correctly. So just get that waist um, fitted and then it, it flares out from there, so you and don't there aren't any darts. Much. Nope, no darts, no darts in that, just the Perfect. waistband. Um, she teaches you the trick on how to get those really nice corners that we talked about last week with, you know, poking out with your bamboo stick. Um, so this is a really great one. It doesn't take a whole lot of fabric either, too, mm -hmm. so, you know, if you don't no, love how it turns <laughs> out, then you didn't lose too much in it. Yeah, so that's the Colette ginger, ginger. skirt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. And then next up is my first pattern that I use with knit fabric, which is always a scary first, um, very different than woven fabrics, but it's the Megan Nielsen Briar t-shirt. Um, it's really nice. I actually have a review on it. Yeah. I just remembered um, a lace version I did. It's a nice pattern. It's got a few different sleeve lengths. It's um, a high-low hem. And then Megan Nielsen does a really great job on her website with sew-alongs. So she tells you how to do each step. You can go to um, her blog. You can see her sew-along. She really yeah. teaches you how to do each step, attaching the, the neck band, hemming. Um, so I really recommend Yeah, that and the this. thing with um, sew-alongs is a lot of times in your patterns, you're going to have drawn illustrations. And a sew-along uses photos. They mm -hmm. take a picture of each step. So for some people, the line drawings just yeah. don't, they can't differentiate mm -hmm. what they're looking at. But in a picture of, a, of an actual garment being sewn, they can. Some people really prefer the pictures. Yeah. So a lot of times, even though the instructions are included in the pattern, mm -hmm. they'll do a sew along too, so that you can have mm -hmm. either or. That's really what really separates the indie pattern designers from the, the big four. Mm -hmm. And the big four being McCall's, Butterick, Vogue, and Simplicity. Um, they, they just really do a great job of making sure that you are gonna have a successful garment at the end. Yes. So definitely. sew alongs are really good. Colette does not sew alongs necessarily, but they'll do tutorials yeah. on, on different mm -hmm. techniques. The technique for inserting an invisible zipper from Colette is still the one that I use Me today. Too. It's and the one I learned on, mm -hmm. and it's the technique that I still use today. Yeah, so. and her trick for the waistband, which you'll, you'll see if you um, use this pattern. Yeah. It's still one I use every time I do yeah. a waistband with an invisible zipper. Yeah, they do a really good job. Yes. Okay, so my first one is um, another indie pattern, actually. It's from Green Line Studio. Um, relatively new pattern for them. It's their willow tank dress. It can be a shirt or a dress. And I chose this because it is, you know, a, a sheep dress. It doesn't have any waistband. It doesn't have any fitting. The same thing Abby was talking about with an A-line skirt. This is basically an A-line dress. Mm -hmm. So you just have to make sure that you get the bust line fitted and then usually everything after that kind of just falls into place. You will need to double check your measurements, especially if you have like a wider hip, if you're pear shaped, mm -hmm. or if you're apple shaped and you're bigger in the middle, um, you'll just need to double check those and, and make adjustments accordingly. But for the most part, you're just, yeah, yeah it's really, really mm -hmm. easy to fit. Um, and it's really cute. I also chose this one because um, it's sleeveless and you know, sewing sleeves for the first time can be a little bit intimidating. Yes. So you can try a dress or a top without sleeves. Um, in this pattern, you'll learn how to sew darts, which I mean, 95% of all the garments are going to yeah. have darts, whether it's bust darts, where it's waistline darts, back darts. 
um, you'll you'll have you'll come across that a bunch and then you'll also learn how to finish off a neckline with bias binding mm -hmm. um, which is also something that you will use a lot if your garment isn't lined then you only have a couple more options and one of them is the bias binding and I think that mm -hmm. they do a really good job of walking you through each step and, and teaching you how to sew this and yeah. it's just really cute and she has sew alongs for most of her patterns I'm sure there's one for the willow I, I I'm not 100% sure but yeah, I'm not sure maybe check yeah maybe but most of her patterns yeah. and I know on her website she has tutorials on attaching bias so right. if you need a little extra help her website is, is full of yeah. those pictures. Yep, so this is a good one. And then, um, so this is actually the very first thing I ever sewed. Um, it is Simplicity E1828. Um, again, it's a shift dress. It's just a straight A-line dress. This one does have a seam across the chest here and then it gathers underneath that seam. So it's a little interesting detail that will elevate you a little bit from this look. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it just proves that, you know, in the beginning, don't go crazy trying to uh, so a dress that is like super fitted mm -hmm. or has a ton of seaming or a ton of details You're just gonna get really overwhelmed and frustrated and probably quit and that's the last thing that we want. Yeah, so um, So yeah, I mean I have basically two a-line things here, but I really loved this and I was so proud of myself when I finished <laughs> yeah. it. We should go back and make our first ones again. We should. That would be so we fun, should. I think. Yeah, and see the difference now. See yeah. What think of oh, it. this one's long, been in Goodwill a long time ago. <laughs> um, it I started coming first. apart, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I still think it'd be really cute. Yes. So. All right, so the last thing we have to share for you is a book that we both love. Mm -hmm. um, it is Love at First Stitch um, by Tilly Walms. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you say her last name? Yeah. Um, Tilly and the Buttons, that's her blog. Uh, she came out with this book and it is really like a beginner's guide. Uh, it starts you out at the beginning of the book with a simplest project, so a pair of pajama pants, so mm -hmm. easy. Uh, but included in that is just so many tips and so many directions about how to mark things. Um, so it starts with the the pajama pants and then it, it progresses mm -hmm. to um, the very end, which is a, a more fitted dress with a zipper. And um, sleeves too, I And think. sleeves, mm -hmm. yes. There's sleeves um, in one of the dresses there. I've made a skirt and mm -hmm. I've actually made the pajama pants from this book. Yeah. Um, she does a really great job teaching you in mm -hmm. this book. I highly recommend it. The patterns are super cute. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really great place to start. Yeah, exactly. If you're only going to pick one thing of everything mm -hmm. that we talk about today, obviously I would suggest picking this book because you're going to get multiple patterns yeah. in one. But if you start in the beginning, if you don't skip ahead yeah, to the don't. cutest dress that there is yeah. in the book, <laughs> but if you start at the very beginning, sew the pajama pants first, mm -hmm. then move on to the skirt like she tells you to do, then move on, you know, and keep yes. progressing and learning a new technique each time, one mm -hmm. technique each time. You will, you will find yourself really falling in love with sewing yes. as you go through this book. I really, truly believe that. Yeah. Um, and you'll have pretty much a whole new wardrobe at the end. Yes, definitely. Um, I forgot there's... the first part was actually this really beautiful headscarf. I wish I could only pull it off as... <laughs> well, it's Tilly can pull it off. Yeah. Well, so there you go. So you start with a neck scarf. That's basically yeah, just going to beautiful. get you into doing some straight stitching. Yes. So, so yeah, I mean, literally, if you, if you start at the beginning and work your way through, it's like a semester mm -hmm. at sewing school, yeah. and it's a whole course. And by the end, I think you'll feel a lot more comfortable maybe moving into some of the advanced patterns mm -hmm. even that are out there. Yeah. So just take your time with the book, and I think you'll you'll be really successful. Yes. So finally, we just wanted to say, if for whatever reason you don't like any of these, please don't let that deter you from sewing. <laughs> um, some things that you can look for in patterns that we would determine them as beginner. Um, just a couple of things, really. I think you just need to be really careful of sleeves. Mm -hmm. um, sleeves sewing okay. set in sleeves is really tricky because if you ever, when you see your first sleeve pattern, I remember seeing yeah, that for the first time and I was work? like, what pattern is yes. this? Oh, that's the sleeve. That's so weird. You think it would just be a tube, but yeah. it's not a tube. It's very shaped and has convex and concave curves and can be really complicated. So I would suggest um, looking for something that has like a extended almost cap sleeve where mm -hmm. there's no 
vertical seam here it's just the shoulder seam and kind of falls over your shoulder naturally that would be a good one mm -hmm. or dolman sleeves yeah so easy. dolman are the ones that are like fat wing where it comes from here and then just curves around like that so it's like a bigger curve that's easier is it called a dolman sleeve when the seams on the top too because i've got ones that are just the seam down the top but then what happens under here? It's just not as baggy. I mean, it's more like a regular sleeve, but it's just a dolman sleeve all the way down. I thought dolman meant that what happened under here. Know. I'll have to research that. Yeah. Um, but there's, <laughs> those are easy. But <laughs> digress. Um, there's also, um, gosh, what's it called whenever they come down like this? The word fell out of Raglan. my head. Raglan <laughs> sleeves Raglan are sleeves. really easy because they're just basically like still straight seams. They're not circles. Yeah, um, right, so those are right. really easy to sew. And then sleeveless, sleeveless yeah. is, a, is, a, is an obvi obvious option. So, so yeah, when you're looking for a beginner pattern, really look, take a look at what the sleeves look mm -hmm. like. Um, and I think that, that that'll steer you in a direction of, of being more successful. And then we've already touched on the other one a little bit, but it's really just kind of avoiding fitted mm -hmm. garments. Um, it's just, there's so many measurements and, you know, getting that to fit right can be really frustrating. And I think in the beginning of sewing, you want to focus on your sewing technique yeah. and worry about fitting technique maybe later as you get more advanced. Yeah. If the pattern has a zipper, like a dress, then it's probably more of a fitted dress. There's lots of dress patterns out there that don't have zippers. They're right. just right. more, you know, classic. Clean. Yeah. You really like the, um... The staple dress. Staple dress, yes. April Rhodes staple dress. That's like a first time pattern for lots of people. Really easy dress and it yeah. can really be made cute if you style it the right way. Yeah, so. that's true. And then if you're not into like A-line dresses or shift dresses, sheath dresses, find one that has an elastic waist. Mm -hmm. You can put an elastic waist in anything. You yeah. can have an elastic waist skirt, mm -hmm. shorts are really cute in elastic waist, and yeah. even dresses. You'll just add it into where your natural waist mm -hmm. is. Um, and it'll cinch it in so to give you more of that hourglass yeah. shape. And that is a very simple, easy technique to do. Mm -hmm. um, think about all the dresses you see out in the stores that just have like a drawstring. Yeah. I mean, that look is not homemade no. at all. So that is it for our beginning sewing pattern ideas. Hopefully you are inspired with one of these that we have here or Tilly's book, or you'll go out and find a pattern based on our kind of suggestions mm -hmm. that we have there. Um, again, just like we said last week, if any of the experienced sewers have watched this video and they have ideas of their own, maybe share with us what your very first pattern was. Mm -hmm. That might be a lot of fun yeah. in the comments. Yeah. Or a suggestion for um, someone who is very, very brand new to sewing garments and we can have a, a fun conversation. Yeah. Next week, we're gonna talk about fabrics for beginners. Mm -hmm. um, so, Maybe you'll want to watch that before you dive in too much into the patterns. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll have a lot of really good ideas for you guys there. Yeah. We'll so, see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.